back to another sewing tutorial. My name is Anne Sophie and I'm the person behind Sewing with Solana. And today we're gonna make the Molly shirt. And this is gonna be super easy to make really good if you're new to sewing and the reason why I came up with a sewing pattern for the Molly shirt is because I think we're getting quite a few messages um, on Instagram because I make a lot of pieces with open back with super thin straps where you don't wear a bra with it and a lot of you want to wear clothing with a bra which I like I totally understand it so here we are making the Molly shirt today and I, when I made it and when I posted it for the first time on Instagram, I also made a matching skirt with it, but this is just going to be a tutorial for the top. I already have a tutorial for the skirt on YouTube and you can draft your own pattern, so you don't need to purchase a sewing pattern for it. But in the YouTube tutorial, I'm making a maxi skirt, but if you want to make it into a mini skirt, you just have to make it shorter. But if you would like to get a sewing pattern for it, I can also make a sewing pattern, like if you maybe don't feel so confident drafting your own pattern, um, let me know and I'll work on making a sewing pattern for it and then making a new tutorial for it. Um, but yeah, let's talk about fabrics because I'm not 100% sure what fabric I want to use yet. So I want to show you what options I have and so you can also see what fabrics you can work with. And the first fabric I would love to use, but the problem, so I'm going to show you the fabric first. It's like this beautiful linen fabric and I love the texture and I love the color. It's an ivory and the reason why I'm not using it is because it is white and because we're not going to use two layers of fabric for it and I think it would be a bit too thin simply because it's white. If I would have gotten it in a different color this would have been so beautiful but I think I'm just going to save this for another project. I already have another idea what I'm going to do with it but yeah if you want to use this fabric I'm going to link it in the description below. Um, maybe get it in a darker color so it's not so see-through. Then the next option, so this is from Potter and Co. And then this, all the other fabrics I'm showing you, I bought at Spotlight. Um, this one is cotton and it's super similar to the fabric that I used for the first um, Molly set that I posted. And when I bought this color, I bought it because I wanted to make this sewing tutorial, but now I'm thinking I already have it in a super similar color and very similar fabric that maybe it would be cooler to make it in a different color and fabric. So the other options I have is this orange linen and viscose blend, which I love the color, I love the fabric. I think this would be so nice. And then I also have this floral print. And I think in all the years I've been sewing, I've only made two pieces of clothing out of a floral print. Mm, and I love it, like when I saw this fabric, I loved it, so I had to get it. And this is rayon, and it's like quite thin, super flowy and drapey, which I think would be very nice. So either this one or this one. I already made the Piper top in this fabric. Maybe I'm gonna do the floral one. Yes, I'm gonna do the floral one. And here you can also see, because very often when I make sewing tutorials, I talk about a good and a bad side and I always use fabrics where both sides look exactly the same. But here with this fabric, like here you can see that the print is much more visible and much stronger and on the other side it's much more faded. So this is the good side and this is the bad side. So yeah, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna use this fabric. I think this is nice. Okay. So I'm gonna link the sewing pattern in the description below and then once you have printed it out you either when you have it in A4 you need to glue all the pages together. I printed mine out in A0 so I don't need to glue the pages together which is saving some time. And then you need to take your measurements and then you need to cut out your right size of the pattern. And this is, this is what it will look like. I already cut mine out yesterday. We have this piece and this piece, 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 two pieces, um, and both of them need to be cut on fold, as you can see here, which means that the fabric needs to be folded, and then you put the sewing pattern on it. And also, there's always two squares on the sewing pattern, and you need to make sure that those measurements are correct. If those measurements are not correct, it means that the settings of the sewing machines were wrong, 
Um, not of the sewing machine, that the settings of the printer or of your computer were wrong, so you need to adjust your settings. It needs to be printed at a 100% scale. And yeah, if the measurements of the box are correct, then that means that your sewing pattern is printed out correctly and now we can start cutting out our fabric. So the first thing we want to do now is we're going to fold the fabric in half. And now here is the fold of my fabric, which means I need to put this part of the pattern where it says fold onto here. And now I'm just going to pin it onto the fabric. So we are starting now by sewing the front and the back together. So first we're going to put either the front or the back, it doesn't really matter. I'm putting the back in front of me with the good side facing me again. So this is the bad side where the color is much more dull, dull, I don't know. Um, yeah, so the good side is facing me and then I take the front of the Molly shirt with the bad side facing me. So the good sides are facing each other. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to line up here where the neckline starts and the shoulder starts and I'm going to pin and I'm going to pin the top of the sleeve together. So I'm starting here's the neckline and here is the shoulder and the sleeve. So I'm going to start here where the neckline and the shoulder and the sleeve meet and I'm going to pin along here and I'm doing then the same on the other side. So we're going to sew from here to here and from here also to here. So my stitch is set to a straight stitch, then we have the length at two and a half, and I'm using some cream white thread because the in-between of the blue flowers is cream white, and I would just recommend getting some thread that's matching your fabric. And now we are sewing with a one centimeter seam allowance, and always when you start and when you stop sewing, make sure you front and back stitch to make sure the stitches don't come undone again. So now that we have sewn the sleeve and the shoulder part together, it's time to sew this part. So we're going to start, oops, I'm going to pull this up. So now we need to start sewing from here around here and then we're going to do exactly the same on this side. We're going to sew from here to here. You can also sew from here from here, it doesn't really matter, but we need to sew this part closed. So first we're going to pin it again and then we're going to sew it. And then once we have sewn, we are going to go over to our, our iron and we're going to press all the seams that we have sewn so far open. So this means we're going to open these up again when we iron and press this part open. It's just going to make the finished product look so much nicer.
So first we sew here and then also this part. So now the next step is to overlock everything that we have sewn and if you don't have an overlock machine you don't really need to have one for the first year I was sewing I also didn't have one and um, it just looks a bit nicer but basically what we're doing when we overlock it we stop the raw edges of the fabric from fraying but you can also do it with your normal sewing machine if you set it to a zigzag option and just zigzag all the raw edges here and um, yeah so we're gonna overlock it and then we come back and then we're gonna hem the neckline. So here we have the neckline. This is the back of the top and here is the front. I'm just gonna start at the back and we're gonna fold it down half a centimeter and then half a centimeter again and I'm gonna stick a needle in here and then we're gonna do this all around and here when we come to the seams of the shoulder make sure that they are folded towards the back of the top. Now that we have pinned the neckline, we're gonna start sewing and I would really recommend that you start on at the back of the shirt just because at the beginning and end we always do some front and back stitching and you don't want it to be um, on the front. So just start at the back and now we're just gonna start sewing relatively close to the edge all the way around. I'm gonna remove this part of my sewing machine just because the whole of the neckline it's actually not a small hole, but um, it's still easier for me getting to the needle of my sewing machine. And now we're gonna start at the back. Again, the back is the side where the neckline is not as deep. And then I just start sewing.
But now that we're done sewing our neckline, for the next step we have to go over to our iron. So while we're at our iron, I would recommend you to iron the neckline. And the next step, what we need to do now, we need to iron the end of the sleeves, but also the end of the top. We need to iron everything half a centimeter inside. So here's the good side, bad side is facing us and we're ironing half a centimeter up and we're doing this again at both end of the sleeves and also at the end of the top and now we also need to use elastic for the next step and because my elastic is two cent uh, sorry one centimeter wide after folding it up half a centimeter I will then fold it one and a half centimeters up again so if your elastic is one and a half centimeters I would recommend folding it up two centimeters but because my elastic is one centimeter I after folding it up half a centimeter I fold it up again for one and a half centimeters and then it will look something like this and after we've ironed it you can also pin everything in place and then I explain to you what we do next. So I'm starting at the end of my top and I'm folding it half a centimeter up. And now I do this all the way around. And here at the side seams, I iron them towards the back of the top. Next up, we take our measuring tape and we measure one and a half centimeters. So now it will look like this and if you want to you can just stick some needles all the way around. So this is what it looks like now and now we're doing exactly the same to the end of our sleeves. It is raining like crazy. Australia isn't as sunny as it always seems to be on photos but actually I'm super sunburned because when the sun comes out it is strong. Um, but yeah I also went camping over the weekend with some friends and then on the last night it started raining and nightmare like in the middle of like it was everything was wet like the tent was wet mattress wet everything it was horrible but yeah anyways it's good for sewing and filming sewing tutorials because up here in my room um it is so hot when the sun is shining we don't have air condition at home so actually it's like the first time in a very long time that i'm filming a sewing tutorial and i'm not sweating which is very nice um but yeah anyways enough about the weather that's so german of me to talk about the weather um, but yeah, what we're doing now, so after we have every, like the end of the sleeves and the end of the top should look like this. And what we are doing now is we're gonna start sewing at one point. Let's start, we sew here and we start sewing close to the edge. And then we sew all the way around until here. So we have to leave a gap of around four centimeters because then we need to get some elastic. I'm gonna show you how we measure it. And then we need to pull the elastic through. So it's very important that on both sides of the sleeves and at the end of the top, like we're doing, like I'm just filming one part because otherwise like it's getting a bit boring if I'm filming three times the same thing. So I'm just filming doing it on one side, but yeah, so you have to do it on all three parts of the um, shirt. 
again so we start around here at some point so all the way around and then we stop here again to leave a gap So and as you can see, there's like the little gap that I left where we then pull the elastic through. So now we need to figure out how much elastic we need and we need to get elastic for the upper part of our arm, like our biceps. So I'm just taking my elastic. I bought mine from Amazon and I just bought a huge roll. I've had it now for I think three years or something or maybe less. I don't remember. But yeah, it's lasting me for a very long time. Um, so I'm just taking my elastic and then I wrap it around the widest part of my upper arm and make sure that you can still move it around a bit but you don't want it to be too tight because then when all the fabric is also scrunched up it's going to add a bit more uh, width to your arm. So I'm wrapping it around my biceps and then I'm also going to add one centimeter of seam allowance. So I'm going to cut mine off. And for reference, my elastic is 27 centimeters long. And then I'm gonna cut another part because I have two arms. Um, like this, and we put them to the side. And now we need to figure out how much elastic we need for our upper body. So we're basically doing the same. The elastic needs to sit below your bust. So I'm going to wrap it around and do the same for your upper, upper arm. Make sure it fits around that it's not too tight but also not sliding down and then add a centimeter of seam allowance. And mine is 72 centimeters and what we're doing now I'm just gonna start with this long one I'm gonna put a safety pin on this side and a safety pin on this side and then I'm just gonna start pushing one end through the gap that we left until we arrive on the other side again and both ends are outside and then I'm overlapping them and going over it a few times like stitching over it and then I can close the gap and then we're finished and then we need to do the same for our arms So now that we're on the other side again, we need to make sure that our elastic didn't get twisted along the way. So just feel it, make sure everything feels right, stretch it out a bit. Just make sure that both ends are staying outside. And once everything is okay, you can take the safety pins off. And then you lay them on top of each other. Take a needle, pin it through here, and now we go to our sewing machine and we're gonna sew over it a few times. So once my foot is down, I pull 
the needle out again and now I'm just gonna go back and forth quite a few times. And now I pull on the fabric and the elastic to make sure it's all inside and now I can close this gap that we left. So now that we have repeated the steps at both our arms and at the end of the top, we are already finished with the Molly shirt. I feel like this is such an easy and simple and quick shirt to make. And even though it's super quick and simple to make, I feel like it's such a cool piece of clothing. I'm so happy with my fabric choice and I definitely have to make a matching skirt with it. I don't know yet if I want to make a mini skirt or maybe even a maxi skirt. I have to think about it for a bit. But um, Anyway, please send me photos of how your Molly shirt turns out and also if you made a matching skirt, send me some photos. Just follow the other YouTube tutorial I have for the maxi skirt and you can just make it into a mini skirt. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna show you what my shirt looks like worn in a few seconds and maybe if I have enough time today I will also make a matching skirt and then you'll see the matching set. And yeah, thank you so much for watching my video. Thank you so much if you have purchased a sewing pattern and I'll see you at my next video. Bye! Thank you.